If you're a manager or a supervisor of a company and you're receiving benefits other than the usual remunerations, like you're receiving cars or allowances, or you're sent to a seminar or travel, don't you know these benefits are also taxable? These benefits are considered as French benefits. So in this video, we'll discuss more about French benefits. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel again. This is Jisrael Atrias, your tax instructor for today. And today we'll discuss about French benefits and their tax treatment. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the notification bell. Okay, so our objectives in this lesson is that you'll be able to identify the taxable and non-taxable French benefits apply tax rules and treatment for various types of French benefits, calculate monetary values and French benefit tax, and of course, finally, to be able to prepare bare form 1603 for French benefit tax with help. So this discussion is divided into four videos and I hope you'd watch those other three videos that I have for French benefits. Okay, so if you're ready, Let's start. So we'll begin our discussion by defining what is a French benefit. So a French benefit is any good, service, or other benefit furnished or granted by an employer in cash or in kind in addition to the basic salary received by an individual employee. So when we say French benefit, this is not the usual or regular compensation received by an employee but rather an addition to the normal or regular compensation. And when we say French benefit, this can be in cash or in kind. Okay, so there are a lot of examples or types of French benefits that an employee might be receiving from his employer. Okay, and we will differentiate those French benefits because they're also taxed differently according to the position held by an employee. So, for income tax purposes, it is necessary first to distinguish a rank and file and a managerial or a supervisorial employee. Why? Because they're taxed differently. So, we have here the manager or supervisor versus the rank and file employee. So why do we need to differentiate the manager or supervisor from a rank and file? Again, the reason is that they are taxed differently on the French benefits they received. So for a managerial and supervisor employee, they're actually subject to, we call this French benefit tax, which is a final tax. Whereas for a rank and file employee, they are not subject to that final tax. Rather, these French benefits are added to their usual compensation and are taxed the same. Okay, so later we'll discuss the differences between the tax for managerial or supervisor employee and the rank and file. So as of now, we have to remember that the managers and supervisors receiving French benefits will be subject to French benefit tax, whereas the rank and file are not. Okay, so who is a manager? A managerial employee is vested with powers or prerogatives to lay down and execute management policies and or to hire, transfer, suspend, lay off, recall, assign, or discipline employees. So when we say manager, they are in the management position, they're holding management position, and they're responsible to make, to draft policies, to execute management policies, to hire people, to lead the people. Okay, so these are managerial employees. On the other hand, when we say supervisory or supervisorial employees, these are those who, in the interest of their employer, effectively recommend such managerial actions if the exercise of such authority is not merely routinary or clerical in nature, but require the use of independent judgment. So when we say supervisor, these are people, these are employees in, in an organization who recommends actions to the management. 
Okay? So, they are not the usual people under the management who are doing clerical jobs, like, for example, accountant who is doing clerical jobs. But when we say, for example, chief of internal audit or the chief audit executive, the CAE, so these people are considered as managerial employees or supervisor employees because they recommend actions to the management to improve their operations. So they require professional and independent judgment. So that is a manager and a supervisorial employee. Anyone who does not have those authorities and responsibilities are considered rank and file. Okay, so a rank and file employee, on the other hand, are those who are not managers or supervisors employees. So rank and file employees do not recommend management policies. They do not execute those policies. And certainly they do not recommend managerial actions. Their work is purely routinary and clerical. So if you are not a manager or you are not having responsibility of being a supervisor, then you are, of course, a rank and file. For example, if you're an accountant, then you are considered as a rank and file unless you assume responsibilities which are for management or for managerial or supervisor employees, then you will not be considered as such, okay? So these are the examples of taxable French benefits. Under the tax code, the following shall be regarded as taxable French benefits. Number one, housing. So if your employer gives you a free house, house and lot, for example, that is a French benefit. Or if you are given, let's say, a free house rent, if you are given a condominium unit for free uh, living, then that is a French benefit. We also have expense account. So if you are given free allowances, let's say for example a monthly grocery, then that is a French benefit. If you are given, if you're a manager and then you are receiving free gas and air fuel every month, then that is a French benefit. If you are having a postpaid post um, phones, then that is also a French benefit. Okay, so anything received by an employee other than the regular remunerations or compensation is considered as French benefits. Vehicles of any kind. So for example, if your work is a manager and then it will be awkward for you to not be owning a vehicle, then your employer is giving you a free vehicle for your own, then that is a French benefit. Okay, so any kind of vehicle. And then household personnel. For example, as part of your um, contract, you are given by your employer a housemaid, you know, to help you with your personal chores or something, then that is also a French benefit. Provided that the employer is paying these housemaids, okay? So, we also have interest on loan at a lower interest rate than the market rate. So, for example, your employee and then you loan, you borrowed an amount from your employer and then instead of imposing higher interest rates, you have to pay, for example, you have to pay only a minimum or lower rate than the difference between the market rate and the rate being imposed is a French benefit. Say, for example, you borrowed 100000 and then supposedly the market rate for that loan is 10%. And then your employee employer said that, oh no, you will be paying me only 1% interest. Then the difference, that 9% is actually a French benefit because you have saved yourself from paying 9% interest. Okay. Another example, we have membership fees, dues, and other expenses shouldered by the employer for the employee in social and athletic clubs or other similar organizations. For example, you're an accountant and then you're a member of PICPA, the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants. And then we have this annual registration fee, annual membership fee of I think 1,000 something or 1,000 plus. And then your employer shouldered this due, then that is a French benefit. 
and expense for foreign travel. For example, if you are sent outside of the country for just a travel, not really a seminar or just a travel, okay, a vacation, for example, all expense paid, then that is a French benefit, okay? Holiday and vacation expenses, for example, during Christmas, and then you are, aside from the usual Christmas bonus and gifts, you're given certain benefits, say like cash, for example, then that is also a French benefit. Educational assistance to the employee or his dependents. For example, if your work, for example, requires you to have a master's degree and then, you know, your employer wants you to pursue this master's degree or doctorate degree because it would help you improve your professional and personal uh, career, then that is a French benefit. Or if you have a child and then your employer frees his tuition, then that is also a French benefit. Life or health insurance and other non-life insurance premiums or similar amounts in excess of what the law allows. So in our current law, we are required, the employers are required to have Pagibig, you know, Pagibig Housing Development and Mutual Fund and then SS contributions, also have field health. So if aside from this, your employer secured an insur and life insurance for yourself. For example, he secured from Sun Life and then it's for yourself. It's for your own. Then that is also a French benefit. Okay? The monthly premium paid by your employee employer for your in your behalf is considered as a French benefit. Okay? So on the other hand, we also have these non-taxable French benefits. Number one, at this, the following shall be considered as non-taxable French benefits. So we have French benefits which are authorized and exempted from tax under special laws. So again, as I have said, there are some uh, items which are really non-taxable, like for example, that SSS, but even can feel health, that is non-taxable. And for example, we have the Christmas bonus and gifts, that is non-taxable. Okay, so for example, also if uh, um, I have mentioned earlier that uh, if you are given a free housing, that is a taxable French benefit. But for example, if your employer gives you a free housing in one condition, that you'll be able to come to work as early as possible for his convenience, for your employer's convenience, then that is a non-taxable French benefits. Why? Because it is not really for your own convenience. It is not you who is being benefited from such housing. It is your employer. Another example. I have mentioned earlier that if you are given a car by your employer, that is a taxable French benefit. However, for example, if your employer gives you this car, so you won't be able to, so you'll be able to come to work on on call or during Saturdays or Sundays or weekends, so that your employer can call you anytime, so that you can get to work anytime whenever he wants you to then that is not for your benefit, okay? That is for your employer's convenience. Or for example, your employer says, okay, I will give you a car, but you have to return this car every day in, the, in, in our basement or in, in, in the company's premise. Meaning to say, you have to come to work on your own and you can only use that car when you are here, okay, then that is certainly not a benefit on your part. That is a non-taxable French benefit because it is for your employer's convenience, okay? So always note of that. If the benefit is for the employers, if it's for your employer's convenience, then that is not a taxable French benefit. Okay, for example, we have these kasambahay, okay, housemaids. They're required to stay in, okay, to stay with their bosses, okay. 
they are given free meals they're given free housing they're given free um you know personal you know things these things are actually not for their own benefits their employer employers give them this benefit so that their presence are here in this house okay so that is for the convenience of the employers hence non-taxable french benefits okay so we also have contributions of the employer for the benefit of the employee to retirement insurance and hospitalization benefit plans okay so we have discussed uh, in our gross income part under exclusion certain items which are non-taxable okay we also have benefits given to the rank and file whether granted under a collective bargaining agreement or not provided that the total benefits do not exceed ninety thousand pesos so since our lecture three the gross income we have already mentioned that any benefits the 13th month pay and other benefits received by everyone with a rank and file or managerial uh, employees any third uh, benefits not exceeding ninety thousand will always be exempted from the tax so for example if you are a rank and file employee and you're receiving grocery allowance per month and then the total amount in one year let's say for example does not exceed ninety thousand then the entire amount is non-taxable but if the total amount exceeds ninety thousand let's say it's hundred thousand then only the excess the ten thousand excess shall be subject to the uh, income tax okay and finally we have the de minimis benefits so we have a separate video for this de minimis benefits but to give you a clue of what are these these benefits are actually small values okay so i hope you you'd watch the other video for de minimis benefits because they are really special okay so these are how we tax french benefits Again, we focus our discussion here for managerial and, and rank and file employees. So, if you are a manager or rank and file, um, any French benefits I have mentioned earlier are subject to French benefit tax, which is a final tax, by the way, if you are a managerial or supervisory employee. Whereas, if you are a rank and file, then these benefits are subject to the normal tax however provided that the total amount exceed ninety thousand pesos okay and what about the tax rates for managerial and supervisor employees we have 35 percent and 25 percent so take note of this there are two french benefit tax rates the 35% and the 25%. So who will be subject to 35% final tax? If you are a resident citizen, or if you are a non-resident citizen, or a resident alien, or a non-resident alien engaged in trade or business. So again, we have already known what are these or who are these citizens and aliens in our previous videos okay so if you belong to those four people then you will be subject to 35 percent however if you are in a resident alien not engaged in trader business then you will be subject to 25 percent final tax rates if however you are a rank and file again you will be subject to the normal tax provided that the total benefits exceed 90,000 pesos. If the total benefits, French benefits, do not exceed 90,000 pesos, then the entire amount is exempted. Any excess of the French benefits over 90,000 limit shall be subject to the normal graduated rates ranging from 20% to 35%. Okay, so we will have a separate discussion, an example for the rank and file but in this video we'll focus on more on the french benefit tax 
for managerial and supervisory employees. Okay? So, our focus, again, is French benefits to managerial and supervisorial employees. So, how is French benefit tax computed? This is the formula, the very basic formula. The French benefit tax is equal to the gross up monetary value times the tax rate, the 35% or 25%. And what is, by the way, a gross up monetary value? So, a gross up monetary value is computed as monetary value divided by 100% minus the tax rate. Okay? So, it is important that you have known already who is or the proper classification of the taxpayer. Is he a resident citizen or resident alien or non-resident alien? Okay, so that you will know what tax rate is applicable. So, okay, so again, this is how we compute the gross up monetary value. We have monetary value divided by the 100% minus the tax rate. So the next question would be, what is a monetary value? Okay, so in, in the succeeding slides, we will show you, I will show you how to compute the monetary value. Okay, basically the monetary value of the benefit received by the employee, the employee from his or her employer. Okay, so let's have first cash benefits. So when we say cash benefits, these are benefits received in cash. Okay, and the monetary value, when the benefits given is in the form of cash, the monetary value is equal to the face amount or the value received. So if you are a manager or an, a supervisor and then you receive 10,000 cash then that is a monetary value okay the face amount if you are receiving if you receive 20,000 then that is a monetary value the face amount of the cash received so illustration Eliza a Filipino the manager of ABC company received a cash benefit of 39,000 the French benefit tax is computed as follows. So first step, we have already here the cash benefit. Okay, the cash benefit is equal to 39,000. That is the monetary values, monetary values rather. So the next step is to compute the gross up monetary value. Okay, so our solution would be gross up monetary value or GMV. The, uh, is equal to monetary value or MV divided by 100% minus 35%. Okay, so first, why 35%? Because Eliza is a resident citizen. He's a Filipino. She's a Filipino. Okay? So, next step is the GMV is equal to 39,000 pesos. That is the monetary value divided by 65%. Okay, so once we get the GMV of 60,000, we can now compute the French benefit tax. So let's apply the formula. French benefit tax is equal to the GMV times the tax rate. So that would be 60,000 times 35%. So the French benefit tax is 21,000. Okay. So you might be asking, who pays the tax? Okay. Actually, the amount received by Eliza here is only 39,000 pesos. Eliza is very thankful. In fact, she screamed, oh my God, thank you. Because she received... 39,000 pesos from her employer. Okay? So, who pays the tax? Of course, Eliza. Because she is the taxpayer. But Eliza actually did not know that she was subject to tax. Why? Why? Because once she received the money, the 39,000, she doesn't know, she didn't know that she already paid the tax. 
okay? Because the actual benefit received by Eliza is not 39,000 but rather 60,000 pesos. That is actually the entire amount of benefit received by Eliza. Okay? However, the employer will deduct the French benefit tax first before the employer would give the cash to Eliza. Okay? Why? Why would the employer do that? Because French benefit tax is a final tax. Meaning to say, before the taxpayer, before Eliza received the money, the tax was already deducted. Okay? So it means to say that the grossed up monetary value, the GMV, is actually that exact amount of benefit received by the taxpayer. But since the taxpayer only received the monetary value, the monetary value there is a net amount of the French benefits. Okay? So 60,000 minus 21,000 French benefit tax, that is the monetary value. GMV minus MV, that is a French benefit tax. GMV minus the French benefit tax, that is monetary value. Okay? So, ELISA is no longer required to declare this 39,000 on her income tax return. Eliza is no longer required to subject to report this 39,000 on her income tax return because this income, this 39,000 was already subjected to tax, to French benefit tax, which is a final tax. Okay? So it is already safe. Eliza would not know that she already paid the tax, but the employer knows that Eliza was already or already paid the tax. So who would pay the tax to the BR? Who would remit? Who would give the tax to the BR? Of course, the employer, because the employer is the one withholding the tax. Okay? I hope you get that. So, how would the... Okay, since French benefit tax is a final tax, the employee is no longer required to report such income on her income tax return, as I've said. Also, the employer, as a withholding agent, must remit the French benefit tax to the BR. So, the entries on the books of the employer upon giving or upon releasing, issuing the French ben benefits to Eliza would be payroll expense account, that is a French benefit, equals to 60000 That is the gross of monetary value. We also have a credit of withholding tax payable, 21000 and the cash. Okay? So, this withholding tax payable 21,000 is actually the 35% French benefit tax, which must be paid and remitted by the employer to the BR. So when the employer would remit this amount to the BR, it would record on his books as debit, withholding tax payable, that is 21,000, and credit cash, 21,000 also. Okay, so again, this journal entries we have in your screen is the entry that would be recorded on the books of the employer upon giving to Eliza the benefits. And upon remittance of the withholding tax to the BR, the journal entry would be debit, withholding tax payable, and credit cash for an amount of 21,000 pesos. Okay? So, aside from cash benefits, we also have housing and other real properties. So, when the benefit given to a managerial supervisor employee is a housing or real property, the following rules shall apply. So, when we say housing or other real properties, this can be land or warehouse 
or buildings or whatever real properties that is given by the employer to their employees, to their manager employees. So there are certain rules. So when there is a transfer of ownership or of title to the employee, when the entire property is given to the employee, okay, the title of the house and the lot, okay, so, or when there's only a transfer of usufactory rights, okay, so what is a usufactory right? This is a right of use of the property. So there are two different things. In the first case, the entire ownership of the real property or housing is given to the employee. While well, as in the second uh, scenario, only the use of such property or real property housing is being granted to the employee. Okay? Ownership and use. Ownership and use. So what are the different rules? If the title or the ownership is transferred to the employee, then our monetary value is equal to the fair market value, assessed value, or zonal value, whichever is the higher amount, whichever is the highest amount of the property received by the employee. So if, for example, you are a manager and then you are given a house and lot by your employer, and then the fair value of such house and lot is $6 million, and the zonal value is only $4 million, and the assessed value is $7 million. Therefore, the monetary value will be the $7 million. And they assess the value because that is the highest amount compared to the three. The fair value, assessed value, and zonal value. Okay? However, if you are given this property for only to use that property, okay, you, you will not own that property. You will only use that property for a certain period, for 20 years, for 10 years. After that, after 20 years or after 10 years or after you go out of this company, you will return the property to us, says your employer. Okay? So the monetary value will be the fair market value or the assessed value which, or zonal value, whichever is the higher, highest amount. It's always like that. Fair market value, assessed value, or zonal value, whichever is the highest. It is always like that. Divided by... 20 years. Why 20 years, by the way? Because in our local government code, real properties has an estimated life of only 20 years. So whether it is a real property, a land or a house or a building or whatever, as long as it is a real property, divide that by 20 years. Okay? Then since it is only the right to use the property, then divide that by 2. Okay, why do we need to divide by 20 years? Why do we need to divide by 2? Okay, first, in the second scenario, you are not entitled to the title of the property. You are not the owner of the property. You're only there to use the property, right? We need to divide that by 20 years because in our law, in our local government code, Real properties are only assumed to live for 20 years. Therefore, we would depreciate this property for 20 years. Hence, divided by 20 years. Why divided by two? Because there are two ownership. There are two owners of the property. Number one, your employer who owns the title, the ownership of that property. And then there's you, the owner of the right, the one who possesses the right to use the property. Hence, divided by 2. Okay? So, that's how you compute monetary values for real properties. Again, when the entire property, when the title is transferred to you as an employee, then the entire fair market value or zonal value or assessed value is the monetary value. Okay? But if you are only there to use the property and you will return that property back to your employer, then the monetary value will be computed as fair value or assessed value or zonal value, whichever is highest, divided by 20, divided by 2. Okay? Example. JHR Company 
obviously it's me, gave the following to Barbara during 2019. It's very competitive manager. So we have house in Cebu, construction costs shouldered by JH or company. So there was a house constructed and the cost was shouldered by the company. There was also a lot where the house was erected where usufruct of 30 years is given. So Barbara is given a lot and then that lot where her house was erected or was constructed is only given to her for use. Okay, the land is only for use for 30 years. Okay, after that, Barbara should return the land to the employer company, JHR company. At the same time, the house in Cebu was constructed using the, the company's cash or company's money for an amount of th $3 million. Okay, so we also have small agricultural land where the title is transferred to Barbara. So the entire title of this agricultural land was transferred to Barbara. So let us compute the French benefit tax. So let us first ask ourselves, is Barbara a manager? Yes. Therefore, Barbara is subject to French benefit tax. Is Barbara what? A resident citizen? There's nothing said. So what would be the tax here? If the problem is silent, as in this case, always use the higher tax rate. And that is 35%. Why? The burden of proof of having lower rate rests on Barbara. So we should not assume the lower rate. The Bayard needs money. Okay? So, next question. Which of these three properties given by company is subject to the monetary value subject to the entire title or use effects for only? So for the house, we know that the entire cost was shouldered by the company in this Barbara's house. Therefore, the entire amount, the three million, is the monetary value. How about the land, the lot? Since it said use of fruct of 30 years, then that is for use only. Therefore, we will divide that by 20 years and two. And then next we have the agricultural land. The title was transferred. Therefore, the entire amount, the 9,000, 100,000, is subject to is our monetary values. Okay, so how do we compute the tax? So first, we'll compute the monetary values, and that is the house in Cebu, the entire 3 million. The land, we have 4, 5, divided by 20 years, divided by 2, we have 112,500, and then we have here, the small agricultural land the title was transferred so that's 900,000 entire amount is our monetary value so our total monetary values here is 4,012,500 so now that we have the monetary values the next step is to compute the grossed up monetary value and that is GMV is equal to monetary value divided by 100% minus applicable rig and we know that it's 35%. So you have 4,012,500 divided by 100 minus 35%. So we have here the gross up monetary value of 6,173,076 pesos and 92 centavos. So after we have the gross up monetary value, now let's multiply, let's, let's compute the French benefit tax. And that is GMV times the tax rate. So we have 6 million times 35% and our French benefit tax is 2,160,576.92. Okay, that's how easy to compute French benefit tax. And again, you would ask, who pays the tax here? Again, it's Barbara. But Barbara did not know that she was actually paying the tax. Because before these, these amounts are received by Barbara, the employer already computed the tax. Okay? So, basically, there's 
no cash involved on the part of the Barbara of Barbara. Barbara did not pay something to his or her employee employer. Okay, nothing. No cash disbursement on the part of Barbara. Barbara only received this amount, these benefits. Okay? Because before the employer gave these benefits to Barbara, Barbara, the, the employer rather, already deducted the tax. So if you are the employer, you should be thinking first. Because if I am the employer, I should be careful when giving French benefits because if I will give more benefits then I will shoulder more I will pay the tax I will pay the two million okay and the the, the manager the employee did not give me something to pay the tax okay so and I will be required by the way it you might be asking what if the employer would not declare this? That is a no-no. That is a tax evasion. Because if the employer would not declare this, would not file and remit the tax, the 2 million 160, the employer cannot deduct this as an expense on his books. Okay? So that should not be done. The employer should pay the tax. So how will this be recorded? in the employer's books okay so again the payroll expense which is equivalent to the gmv the gross monetary value debit and credit withholding tax payable we have two million one sixty and then credit the benefits okay total of four million twelve five hundred okay so that is for real properties how about if the benefits given is a vehicle or personal properties so we have here automobiles and other personal properties with a benefit given to a managerial supervisor employee is in an automobile or other personal properties the following rules shall apply so again when there is a title transfer of ownership or title and only the use so again like in in the real properties if there is a transfer of title, if the entire ownership is given to the employee, then the monetary value is equal to the acquisition cost. If the personal property is currently acquired or the current market value, if that property is second hand, okay, for example, it was acquired two years ago and then the value today is different, therefore, the current market value will be our basis. And then the cash value of our properties acquired where only portion is shouldered by the employer. Okay. Next, if only the use of factory right was granted, meaning you, the employee does not actually own this property but only granted to use this property, then the monetary value is equal to the acquisition cost or current market value or fair value or the cash value divided by five why five years again in our local government code personal properties are to be depreciated only for five years any personal properties five years real properties 20 years and since this is a issue factory right then again divided by two why there are two owners the owner of the entire property, the personal property, your employer, because anyway, your employer has the right to get back that property because it is not yours. It is registered to the company, right? So the company actually owns that property. So the title is owned by the employer, employer, whereas the right to use is owned by the employee. Okay, so that's why there are two users here. Hence, divided by two. Okay, so again, if it's personal property and only use of factory rights given, the AC or CMV or fair value or current cash value divided by five years, divided by two. Okay, whereas if it's the entire properties given to the employer employee, then the entire value is the monetary value. Example. 
JHR Company gave the following to Dominic, its super supervisor, during 2019. So we have Toyota Innova. Where, the only, where only the use of such is given. So use, that is, use of factory. A MacBook Pro of 170. So let us compute the French benefit tax. There are, two, there are only two items here. So again, the first item, the Toyota Innova, Innova uh, is granted to Dominic for only for use. So hence, you'll divide that 1.6 by 5 years divided by 2. And the MacBook Pro, which is a personal property also. And the entire per, uh, item is given to Dominic. Therefore, that 170 is our monetary value. So, our solution would be first to compute the monetary values. So, we have here that Toyota Innova, 1,600,000 divided by 5 years, divided by 2, we have 160,000. And we also have the MacBook Pro, the entire amount, the 170. Hence, our total monetary values is equal to 330,000 pesos. After we get the monetary values, it's time for us to compute the gross up monetary value, which is equal to monetary value divided by 100% minus applicable rate. Oh, by the way, what will be the rate applicable here? It is not said whether Dominic is a resident citizen or what. So again, as I have said, always use the higher tax rate. If you are in confused, always use the higher tax rate. Okay? The burden of proof of having lower tax rate uh, uh, is on the part of the taxpayer. He must prove. So our gross up monetary value will be 507000 692.31 and after we get the GMV we will now compute the French benefit tax and that is GMV times French benefit tax rate 507 times 35 percent we have 177 692.31 so that is a French benefit tax okay so I hope you you have mastered already the pattern compute the monetary value Compute the GMV, compute the French benefit tax. The monetary value is uh, dep depends. If it's cash, that's the entire face amount. If it's real property, it depends. Transfer of ownership or transfer of use of factory right. If it's ownership, then the entire uh, fair value or assessed value or, or zonal value. If use of factory right, then divide by 20, divided by 2. If it's or personal properties, then again, identify whether it's the, the title or the use of the property. If it's a title, then the entire current value or acquisition cost. Okay? If it's only use, then divided by 5, then divide by 2. Okay? So it's very easy to memorize. Uh, the next we have here, the interest on loan. So, when the benefit granted is in form of an interest forgiven by the employer in respect to a loan extended by the employer to the managerial or supervisorial employee, the monetary value is equal to the difference between the market rate and the actual rate granted. Okay? So, if it is a loan, again, if it is a loan, and then there is a lower interest rate, then the monetary value is equal to the difference between the market rate and the actual rate imposed. So, when the entire interest is forgiven, the monetary value is equal to the prevailing market interest on the same loan. Why? Because basically, the market interest minus actual interest, that's market interest minus zero. Therefore, the entire market interest is the monetary value. But if the loan bears only a lower interest compared to prevailing market interest rate, then the monetary value is equal to the difference between the interest imposed and the prevailing interest. Example, during 2019, XYZ Company granted two loans to Cesar, its manager, 
with the following details. So there are two loans here. Number one, an amount of 100,000 on July 1 to 19, where it was agreed that the market interest of 10% will be forgiven. Meaning to say, for the entire 100,000, there will be no interest to be paid by Cesar. However, on the other loan, an amount of 3,000 in October 1, 2019, which bears an interest of 3% compared to market rate of 10%. So, there's already interest here, 3%, compared to the, act, the market rate of 10%. So, it's lower by 7%, right? So, the monetary value for the first loan is actually the 10% forgiven because Cesar benefits by not paying interest at all, right? The entire 10%. However, for the second loan, only it's 7%. Why? That's 10% market rate less 3% actual rate. Then Cesar benefits 7%. He saved himself from paying 7% on that second loan. Okay, so how do we compute that? Take note of the months. For the first loan, it was granted on July 1. Hence, July, August, oh, uh, September, October, November, and December. That's six months. Whereas for the second loan, it's October 1. October, November, December. Three months. So the monetary values will be for loan 1, 100,000 times 10% times 6 months over 12. Again, why 10%? Because the entire interest is forgiven. That's 3,000 pesos. And for loan 2, we have 50,000 times 7% times 3 months over 12. Why 7%? Because the actual rate is lower by 7% compared to the market rate times three months. Hence, the total monetary value here is 3,875. Okay, so now we have the monetary value. The next step is to compute the GMV. And that is, again, it is not said here. Therefore, we'll, say, we'll assume the higher rate. So 3,875 divided by 100% minus 35%, that would be 5,161.54. And our French benefit tax would be GMV times French benefit tax rate. We have 5,161.54 times 35%. So the French benefit tax is 2,086 pesos 0.54. That is a French benefit tax. Okay, so I hope you learn a lot from this video and I hope you watch the next video which is also about French benefits but received by the rank and file employee. You'll also have a video on the minimis benefits. That's for the third one. And the fourth one would be how to file their form 1603. So thank you for watching and I hope you watch the other video.